Do you want to know why you love Baby Yoda or the child and perhaps the old Yoda as well? Stay tuned. Okay, let's take it from the beginning. The first Yoda is a hand puppet. You put your hand inside of it, you move his mouth and jaw, upper lip and uh, brows. And rest of the hand is just to hold the head in place so he can move around, uh, turn his head and so on. That puppeteer also has his left hand inside, so he is the left hand of Yoda. So he can he can move uh, thumb and two fingers, okay? Then you have the second person, the second puppeteer. He stands on the right side using his right hand as Yoda's right hand, okay? That's the only job for the second guy. And then you have a third person and a fourth person. The third person has a box with two joysticks with wires going inside of the puppet controlling the eyes and the um, eyelids. And the last person has a box with two joysticks controlling each ear on Joda. Okay? Because he, he can move his ears. Okay, so four people, four puppeteers to control one character. And then you fast forward a couple of years and they decided to make Yoda into a CGI character. So, with CGI, you know, you remove the puppet, you remove the puppeteers, and then you have a clean plate uh, with the actor performing, and then you add the CGI on top of it. Okay, that's Yoda from Star Wars, right? First practical effects, then CGI. And then we go to the future. Now we have The Mandalorian, a very high-tech production with cool digital backgrounds they can change on the spot, track the cameras and everything. And in the beginning of making the uh, baby Yoda or the child, uh, he is made the same way as they did in the first Star Wars film. So he's also a puppet and they have, of course, uh, enhanced a little bit uh, with the technology and they had a servo so you can control him like an uh, RC car or something or airplane. Okay, so, so they were in the original idea here uh, with, to use animatronics. But they were kind of skeptical if it could compete with this digital stuff because they was making this groundbreaking cool camera tracking with the backgrounds and the the lighting everything changed and you, you got to check it out if you don't know what it is what it is but basically you have a backdrop or a big TV and that TV is so strong so if you show uh, a desert all that light will reflect back on the actor and then you move the camera and that will track the image so it looks totally realistic that they're actually there and that light will bounce on the actor and if you put in the baby Joda it will bounce on him as well so they have the same setup and the same lighting and so now they have this technology they know exactly how to do it and everything works out fine. You, you, you just put the Mandalorian there, spread out a little dirt on the, on the floor and that seamlessly combines uh, the whole scene with the uh, backdrop, okay? But now they were skeptical if this little puppet thing could actually hold up in the quality. So what they did was they shot one scene with an actor and the puppet. Then they removed the puppet and shot the same scene once again to have a clear plate just in case they want to add a uh, CGI character on the top. But then finally they decided to just, no, no CGI uh, for Baby Joda. He looks fantastic, the lighting is perfect, it looks seamlessly and everything was like Wow, it, it's, it looks so good and everything works out and you have these subtle movements from, uh, from the rods and from the hands and everything, how, how he was expressing himself. So now they could actually see that 
that puppet and that actor, they could interact with each other and everything looks perfect. So they didn't use any CGI for, uh, uh, for Baby Yoda. And that's why you love Baby Yoda. And probably why you loved old Yoda from the first movie, because back then it was groundbreaking technology. And it's kind of the same thing in The Mandalorian. It's groundbreaking to use old stuff with new stuff and have the light to interact with everything and have the actor to interact with something. And this makes me very happy because I love practical effects. And and I love that they made this work and that there are actually people and audience that want to watch practical effects before CGI. I'm not saying that CGI is bad in, in, in all aspects, but I think if you start out with a practical puppet, you have to commit to, to really stick with it and do it in every movie in the same franchise. Because if you suddenly change him, you suddenly change his look, you change his acting or movement, and you, you, the audience see that it's not the same character. It's, it's trying, but it's computer generated. It's not looking that good. And it, at least back then, it, it didn't look that good when they replaced him. But nowadays, they can make like, let's see, a Planet of the Apes, the latest Planet of the Apes. I love that movie because that, that it looks so real. If you have seen it, you can just type in the comment, uh, Planet of the Apes. It, it, so I know that you've seen it. It's awesome. It looks totally realistic. But they said from the, the get go when they started to do remakes of Planet of the Apes. OK, we're going to do it with CGI. So the first uh, Planet of the Apes with James Franco is CGI. And it's kind of nice. It, it looks good. But it's nothing compared to the new one, the, the latest one. That looks totally real, according to me. Uh, so I'm just saying they, they can do nice stuff with CGI. But I prefer that old puppeteering stuff because it brings it brings this uh, kind of magic to it, like this feel-good experience when you watch it. But there is a few issues to make it practical. It takes a lot of people on the place. You have to hide them. So you have to rise the floor so they can be underneath and stick their hands up. So there is a big production cost to make it that way as well. And uh, I think that's the reason why many people don't use practical as much as they did before now when they have CGI. That is that it takes more people to synchronize their movements uh, together and with the actor on set. So there is instead of two people trying to move, there is like five people trying to collaborate and, and move the right piece and everything so he, he doesn't look all screwed up in the face and arms like sticking out. And, and the other issue is the lighting. If you don't light the puppet correctly, it only looks like a puppet. Therefore, it's very tricky because it can take a lot of time to set up all the shots and stuff because even if the actor looks good and every prop and, and stuff on the scene looks good, when you then arrive with a puppet, you see it's a puppet. No matter how good and how nice the details are, you suddenly add it to the scene and it's like, yeah, we see the movement, we see everything, but it still feels like a puppet. It doesn't look good. And this is actually how I destroyed a whole day of filming. We were filming our own sci-fi series, The Space Apart. It's a story about two boys that finds a UFO there's an alien, and this alien is an animatronic puppet. So it looked great for a full day. Every shot we did, everything looked perfect. It was perfectly lit. It was believable. The child actors we had, they loved it. They thought it was amazing. It's cool. And then we took it outside for the next day of shooting. And the whole day was like me scratching my head and the, everyone was like, this isn't working at all. This is not 
nope, this is not working, we don't know what to do. And we asked the FX company, what, what shall we do? How can we light the scene? And the and they said, no, nah, this is, we, we, we agree, this is, doesn't work. It doesn't, this is not fair to the other day we were shooting. So I'm gonna show you a few clips from my own sci-fi series that I made with a bunch of passionate people and uh, we were hugely inspired by the films from the 80s. And the series is called The Space Apart. And the first episode is available right now on YouTube for free. So if you haven't seen it, you can click on this link to watch the full episode. And the link is also in the description below this video. Because I'm going to spoil a few scenes here. So take a look at this and see what you think. This was the shot we started with. We were in that barn a whole day. We had a special effects team on location and we had lights. We had everything rigged up and everything looked totally how we wanted it to look. Okay. And the next day uh, we went outside and nothing looked the same way it did the day before. We couldn't figure it out why it didn't work. It was the same animatronics. It was the same team. It was everything was the same, but the lighting wasn't the same. The setup, the location. So take a look at this. Yeah, kind of embarrassing, huh? I I, I don't want to see it because I think it's no, it's a puppet. It, it's not a it's not a character. It's a it's a toy. It's it doesn't look good. I don't know why. I I don't I I know why, but I don't I can't, you can't put your finger on it when you're there cuz we were a very low budget or no budget uh, team and we didn't really know how to fix it on location cuz the effects team they were professional everything and they said, "Now we should have planned this very very careful like you did indoors cuz this outdoor stuff, it's depending on the sun, you have to have uh, reflectors, you have to have a lot of stuff, and we were limited. And we tried to be in the shadows, out in the sunlight, in like doing some um, depth of field and stuff, and we tried to do make something blurry and kind of there, but not there. And eventually we, we had to like delete all scenes for that day. And uh, yeah, that's sad because we only had two days with the alien actually we had three days but the effects team was just there two days and one of those days were totally fucked. so that's kind of sad when it doesn't work but if it works it looks so much better with practical effects i think it looks really good that's why we love yoda in the first star wars that's what we love, Baby Yoda and the Mandalorian, because they're on location, they are real, even though we know they're puppets. And the one in between, I don't know. But you may prefer the CGI version, I don't know. Tell me in the comments below. I'm Richard Thompson, that's a wrap, everybody. Yeah.